Good morning and a very warm welcome to the third European Commission annual conference on technical support. We're live from our studio in Brussels and we have an action-packed few hours ahead of us. You won't want to miss a thing. I'm Naomi Lloyd, Euronews TV journalist, and I'm delighted to be here with you hosting this event. Now, we know that you're joining us from across the EU. We have people watching from every member state and that people are still registering and going to be joining us throughout this morning. And I can tell you there's quite a buzz here at this end. So let me take you through what we're going to be covering this morning. We're going to be taking a look at how the technical support instrument can help you successfully implement the reforms needed in your country. You're going to be getting both policy and practical technical advice and hearing from high level inspirational speakers and experts in their field. And this is, of course, where we kick off the TSI 2024 rollout. So we're going to be revealing the priorities for the upcoming year and the list of flagship projects. And we want to hear from you as well. The chat is open. So if you have any questions as we go along, please do write them in there. And we'll be putting some to our panelists as we go along. If you can't see the chat, you need to shrink your screen. And it's just below the screen there. So without any further ado, I shall hand over now to the Director General of DG Reform, Marion Nava, to open the conference for us. And in a moment, we're going to be hearing from administrations in other member states for our panel discussion. But first, I'm joined in the studio by the Deputy Director and Head of Unit for Governance and Public Administration at DG Reform, Daniele Dotto. Welcome to you, Daniele. Now, we first met in 2021 at the conference Fit for the Future, and we talked then about the resilience of member states in the face of all of these crises. Now, I know that since then, the Commission has set up an expert group. You meet quarterly, I think, with representatives from member states. And I know the Commission's gone public on a number of the challenges you've identified identified. I wonder if you could give us an overview of those challenges and what do they mean for resilience? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Naomi. Good morning, uh, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Indeed, as you say, we met in November 2021 when we organized what was the first and the biggest conference uh, on public administration uh, in, from the European Commission. So essentially, you're saying that the reforms need to bring a combination of new working methods, new skills and knowledge that's based on data. Absolutely. That's exactly it. OK. So how important then is technical support for the successful implementation of these key reforms in member states? I would say that technical support is obviously extremely important, additionally provided by the European Union. Yeah, it's fascinating to hear that really what people really want to know concretely and know yes, that exactly. we're on the right track. Now, the focus of this year's conference, of course, is how we ensure that public administration is fit for the future and adaptable to change. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our panel. So let's talk a bit more about some of these challenges, the reforms needed, and some shared good practice with our panel of distinguished guests. Let me introduce them to you now. They're across Europe, and they are joining us from Paris. We have the OECD's Director for Public Governance and Director for Public Affairs and Communications, Elsa Pilichowski. Welcome to you. Joining us from Berlin is the Deputy Director General for Public Service at the Federal Ministry of the Interior and Community, Dr. Kai Otto. Warm welcome to you. From Athens, the President of Greece's National Center for Public and Regional Administration, Pareskevi uh, Dramaliotti. And from Nicosia, Cyprus, we have the Mayor Konstantinos Yokagis. So a warm welcome to all of you. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, appreciate your time and your expertise. And a reminder to those of you watching that we do want to hear from you. So do write your questions in the chat as we go along, and we'll do our best to get to some of those. A reminder, the chat is just below your screen. So if you can't see it, shrink your screen. You'll see the chat tab, and you click on that. We heard from you, Daniele, about the reforms there that are needed. So let's bring in Elsa, if we can, for the first question. Um, Elsa, we've been talking about reforms in the EU since I was a junior reporter. So from the OECD perspective, why do we need them? What are the changes, the benefits that these reforms will potentially bring, both to citizens and to public administrations themselves? 
Many, many thanks, Naomi. And of course, uh, I'm like you, I have heard that since I was a junior researcher also at the OECD. Uh, so many, many thanks um, to the European Commission uh, for the invitation, uh, to Mario Nava and Daniele Dotto in particular for this invitation, but also for our excellent collaboration uh, over time. Um, to respond to your question, um, uh, as, as Daniele described, uh, we are living really in a polycrisis environment today and in such uncertain times with huge present and future challenges that, you know, every citizen is aware of. Uh, and I look forward to the discussion of this panel this morning. Thank you very much. Else uh, for opening our panel debate there, and certainly collaboration as well. We're so pleased to have you here, and we'll be hearing more about that. Just a very quick question to you: How important is it, do you think, that we really start thinking about reforms as a continuous process in policy making? So this is now. I mean, this is really a, an, an important question for the future. There is um, there's something about governments that make them slower uh, than. The private sector. Thank you so much. Lots of points there. We're going to try and come back to as well during our panel about public-private relationships, future technologies, lots for us to talk about. Daniele, did you want to say something there? Thank you. And, and uh, thanks to, to Elsa for highlighting once again how close we're working with the, with the OECD and how common values we, we have. And I would like to pick up on a point that, that Elsa has made, which is about uh, the principles of public administration. Sure, which I is saw Elsa thank nodding you. along there as you were speaking, Daniele. I want to open up to some of our other panelists as yeah. well. Daniele, you mentioned earlier about how gaining skills is one of the major challenges ahead. I'd like to come to you, Kyoto, if I may. Um, what's the situation like in Germany regarding skills? And what are you doing to ensure that there are high quality, highly skilled stuff in public administration for the future? Yeah, thank you, Nomi, and thank you to, thank you to DG Reform in, to, for inviting me to speak at this important event. We are all faced with the new trends and challenges in the public service, and I'm pleased to share my perspective on this topic. And it's clear that our countries only work if our public service is strong. Thank you. Thank you so much there. There's lots to take in. Really interesting to hear about your experience and also to be reminded about the generational difference in expectations and also just to be reminded of why we're here, the importance of this work, because it affects our societies, the well-being of our society. So thank you for that. So we heard the German perspective. Let's move on to the Greek. It's a different institutional and administrative setting. Can I come to you, Paraskevi, and ask what are the particular challenges you see in Greece regarding skills? And what do you consider are the main elements of a modern skills portfolio that public administrations should equip their staff with in order to build a modern and resilient administration to effectively tackle these challenges we've talked about? Thank you, Naomi. Yeah. So I think that learning from others is very important, especially during crisis. That's great to hear, isn't it, Daniele, about that sharing of expertise between member states as, you know, as everything they've learned from these crises to be prepared. Absolutely. Good to hear yeah. that. Absolutely. And I think let, let's yep. move now, unless you wanted to jump in there, but let's move to um, local administration. We've heard about the challenges and needs for reforms at the level of member states. So I'd like to bring you in, Konstantinas, Jokadzis. Um, can you tell us more about the importance of the local administration and its readiness to change and adapt to current and future developments? Well, uh, at first, uh, good morning to everyone. And there is a role for the people, and that can be best expressed through local authorities. Thank you so much. I think you explained very clear the, right, the vital role of local administrations and that sense of you being on the ground, having that daily interaction, I think it's really important. Um, given that then, what support would you say, you touched on some, but what support does local administration need so that you, you can further increase your capacity to meet all of these challenges? Well, uh, I, I, I would could easily say, uh, obviously, training. Okay, I'm gonna uh, bring you in there because we hear a lot about AI, the future skills, but that was to hear a real example of this is what's going on, it's changing so quickly, this is how we need the support and training. Can you bring in maybe then how TSI can help with this? Because this is obviously a shared experience across public administration. 
Absolutely. So first of all, to, to say a word about the, the TSI itself, we're not going to explain the details. I will not elaborate more on the <laughs> flagships because we don't have we time don't have and also now. because this will come later well, in the morning. Thank you. It's really thank helpful. You. Uh, yeah, the time is flying by for our panel discussion. We knew it would. Um, We've been asking for your questions. You have been sending them in. I've got some here. I'm going to see how many I can get through. Um, so let me, they're picking up on some of the conversations we've been having. So Elsa, I've got one for you. What are the factors that make jobs in public administration less desirable? Um, it says a corruption and politicians, a disproportional influence over public administration mentioned in this context. So that's for you. To Elsa. Oh, so I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, I can now. Yes. Closer to almost an, uh, in touch with our citizens and immediate democracy. You want to respond to that request? Absolutely. On without, the spot. Uh, without, <laughs> without, uh, um, I, I'm not in a position to, to endorse it, but I'm very happy to hear this and I can confirm to the mayor that the TSI has allowed us in the past and will allow us in the future to work with the local uh, local authorities. Thank very quick, thank you very much. So thanks to everybody. I really think this morning we felt what we can define the spirit of a team Europe, uh, meaning that we are combining, we're joining forces between the member states, the European Commission, European institutions, and I will also include uh, the OECD in this one, to support the member states in the efforts uh, that they're doing to, to do uh, reforms. How we do this? TSI we mentioned, expert group we mentioned, and just a little bit teaser, um, we are thinking, we're working um, on a, a new initiative, a new political agenda of the Commission to enhance the European administrative space. This has been mentioned, anticipated in the 2023 Commission Working Program. I will say no more, we'll but we'll next, as a teaser, uh, as a teaser for the we next. Are at yeah. time, we're over time. Thank you, a huge, yeah. huge thank you to all of our panelists. It's been a great conversation. I'm sure you'd agree. We've covered a lot of ground, so thank you very much indeed for your time. Now, we have been talking about TSI and how it can support public administrations in change, but it's much wider, of course, than just support to public administrations. It can cover a wide range of areas. And here's a look at how it works. The technical support instrument supports the EU member states with their reform agenda.